So it's an outside MR, so the quality is not that great. Uh, but the CT is good. Like extensive peribiliary cysts. Yeah. But there are a lot of other findings too. So young patient, 28 year old male who had history of a congenital disorder, operated at day 10 of life. Looks like and now presented with symptoms of cholangitis. It's got, is that azagous continuation? Yeah, so there's azagous continuation of the IVC, very biliary cysts or like cystic changes along the bile duct. Alina's saying Caroli's disease. Differential, but this was not Caroli's. <laughs> Can Caroli's be just periductal like this? Uh, theoretically, yes. They always say that the differential for periliary cyst is Caroli's, but yeah, I've, I've seen only two cases of Caroli's and I've seen those as like deep, like periliary cyst and not towards the hilum, more towards in the mid portion of the liver. Is the portal vein also gone? Where's... No, I think portal, yeah, portal vein is patent, just a little like mass effect on it from just such extensive biliary changes. So there is polysplenia. Yeah. There is malro, so SMV is on the left. Um, subnormal pancreatic tissue, so they call this as a mass at an outside hospital, but I think it's just pancreas, which is just totally rotated to the right side. If you see the vascular anatomy here, so celiac, see how the SMA, like this branch goes in here and... That I think that's just pancreatic tissue. So a lot of manifestations of heterotaxy. So this was, um, um, so this patient had biliary atresia and so, like they said that possibly had Kasai procedure at 10 days of age, portoenterostomy, but they were not sure because this was so many years back that this patient didn't have any records um, like what, but that's what we presume that if it was biliary atresia, then the surgery that they had was Kasai procedure. We couldn't find the common bile duct in this. And these patients typically have repeated episodes of cholangitis. So that's how he had presented. And then we did PTC to just relieve his symptoms. So this was intrahepatic bile duct cysts. These are not peribiliary cysts. These are just cystic dilatation of the bile ducts. Um, so this overall, the diagnosis in this case was biliary atresia with splenic uh, malformation. Like biliary atresia can be isolated, or it can be in combination with syndrome, typically heterotaxy. Um, so that's known as biliary atresia splenic malformation. And if, when they um, whether they get Kasai procedure done or not, they typically have Kasai procedure because that's the life saving procedure that they um, have to have. So. Uh, majority of these, a lot of these patients develop these um, dilatation of the bile ducts, intrahepatic biliary cysts, it's just cystic dilatation of the intrahepatic bile ducts. The significance is anytime these are formed, uh, um, it's an indication of poor prognosis because it predisposes the patient to repeated episodes of cholangitis. And the closest differential for this is peribiliary cysts, um, but these are not peribiliary. They are uh, dilated bile duct. Um, and this should not be confused with cystic biliary atresia, which is just a variant of biliary atresia where you have cyst formation, but it's more of a pediatric neonatal diagnosis. When patients who are born with biliary atresia, they have a big cyst at the hilum. So the, the, the debate over there is whether it's cystic biliary atresia versus colidocal cyst. I just mentioned it because this term can be confusing. This is not cystic biliary atresia. Um, and I think... Um, what I didn't show was this IR image and you can see that it's the bile duct that's like the biliary system that's completely like has these micro cysts formed. So peribiliary cysts won't be seen on an angiogram, angiogram because they are peribiliary. They don't communicate with the uh, bile duct system. Very cool. So you, so you think that um, the cystic dilation was going on for a while and then they developed cholangitis. Like what was the purpose of putting in these Drained. Yeah, to relieve cholangitis. So the these patients typically, because of cyst formation, they have stasis and that's why they come with repeated episodes of cholangitis. And sometimes it's so bad, like even if you can't do it, uh, PTC was done to um, take care of cholangitis part, but eventually they will require liver transplantation if they get keep on getting these repeated episodes of uh, cholangitis. And the cyst formation, uh, when we uh, 
like did a literature search, um, they said that sometimes it can be just a single cyst formed, like it's just different manifestations. So either a single cyst in these patients or just this diffuse cystic transformation of the biliary system. Very cool. So you guys were able to call it before you went to IR, like that these weren't peribiliary cysts. Yeah, we did a lot of literature search and we just <laughs> called it as. <laughs> yeah. Cool.